Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Roosevelt Williams III. I'm the senior pastor here at St. John's African Methodist Episcopal Church in Montgomery, Alabama. The Lord is good and worthy to be praised. So let's begin by praising God. Let's begin praising and magnifying his name with this morning's announcements. Good morning, family. Announcement, joys, and concerns of the church. Please note all announcements need to be turned into the church office. By Wednesday of each week, you may email your announcements to St. John's AME at bellsouth.net. Join us for prayer. St. John's AME Church Prayer Line is available every Tuesday morning at 615. Please feel free to join the call. The prayer line number is 515 six zero four ninety three hundred access code four one eight five one five the youth will have choir practice for youth day on monday june seventh at six thirty p.m that's tomorrow the recording will take place after rehearsal please review the following songs you're all i need hezekiah walker bless the lord myron butler Please come dressed in a white shirt and jeans. Thank you, Shamika Whetstone. Greetings, St. John's family. St. John's annual Youth Day program has been scheduled virtually for Sunday, June 13th. The guest speaker will be Reverend Devonta Anderson. That's next Sunday. The Sunday School will host an end of school year bash on Sunday, June 13th after the Youth Day program. The event will be held at Oak Park, shelter number four, from 1.30 to four o'clock. The food will be catered by Jim and Nick's Barbecue with the choice of pulled pork or chicken. Games and prizes for kids and adults alike. If you plan to attend, please call the church office to sign up and indicate your preference. The deadline to sign up is this Wednesday, June 9th. For more information, please call Ira Sindemans or Cynthia Underwood Thomas. Christian Education Conference 2021, the virtual presentation of the 9th District AME Church CEC 2021 will convene on Tuesday, June 15th at 1130 AM. This year's theme is AMEC Pressing On. The Congress will consist of a worship service learning labs, workshops, and a special presentation. We are anxiously awaiting and looking forward to you joining us for this virtual Christian education experience. The Zoom link is forthcoming. As always, it will be a time of learning and enjoyment. Mark your calendar and save the date. The Couples Encounter Ministry new book focus for 2021 is The Marriage You've Always Wanted by Gary Chapman. We hope all couples will join us for our Couples Encounter Ministry each third Saturday at 6.30 p.m. For more information, contact Reverend Sheila. Join us on Facebook for our Friday Night Live services at 7.30 p.m. You may also contact us on Facebook at facebook.com, roosevelt.williams.315. We are studying the Holy Spirit. Join us for conference call Sunday school at 9, 10 a.m. The call-in number is 515-604-9300. Access code 418-515. For more information, contact Ira Simmons. St. John's youth can attend the Teen Sunday Youth Class via Zoom at 9.30 a.m. For more information, contact Terry Brown. Join us for Evenings at the Altar prayer line on Sunday evenings at 6.15 p.m. Call-in number is 515-604-9300. Access code 418-515. The Youth House Ministry will have Bible study via Zoom. Join us on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. for Bible study. For more information, contact Pastor Williams. There are two adult Bible studies offered on Wednesdays. Join Terry Brown for a conference call adult Bible study 
Wednesdays at 615. The call-in number is 605-313-5862 with access code 540-310. The second is via Zoom, organized by Ted Morgan. Join the adult Bible study on Wednesdays at 645. For more information on this class, contact Ted Morgan. Please join us for Friday Bible study at 1150 via conference call. 515-604-9300. Access code 418-515. We're studying the book of Psalms. For more information, contact Pastor Williams. Children's Bible study via Zoom will be held on Thursdays, that's every Thursday, at 5.30 p.m. Grades 1st through 3rd at 5.30 and grades 4 through 6 at 6.15. Join the Zoom meeting. The link is available through me. Join us for drive through Holy Communion at 11.30 in the Crampton Bowl parking lot. Enter the parking area from the Madison Avenue onto Hilliard Street, then take the second entrance from the right from Hilliard onto the parking lot. We are practicing social distancing. Please remain in your vehicles and wear your mask. We look forward to seeing you. Birthdays and anniversaries. For the week of June 6th through the 12th, Shamika Weststone on the 6th, John Knight on the 7th, Fanny Tarrant on the 10th, Hazel Youngblood on the 11th, Virginia Manuel on the 12th. Praying God gives you a day as bright and as wonderful as you. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary to Dana and Juan Henderson on the 7th. May your marriage be blessed with love, joy, and companionship. Happy anniversary. Let us not forget our sick and shut-in, Audrey Anderson, Christabel Stevens, Lula Davis, Robert Williams, Olga Moore, and Irene Wiley. These addresses are available to you at the church office. Also, we have another announcement coming to us from the Ministry of Economic Development. The 9th Episcopal District takes this opportunity to thank you for your generous donation. It is greatly appreciated and will assist as we continue to fulfill the mission and the purpose of this ministry. We are set up to help, enable, encourage, and empower. Please be reminded that we are a 501c3 organization and your contributions are tax deductible. This comes from the from our own Bishop Harry L. Seawright, presiding prelate of the 9th Episcopal District of the AME Church. Finally, funeral arrangements for Reverend Dr. Brother Farrell J. Duncan, Friday, July 11th, 2021. The public viewing will be at 12 p.m. from 12 to 5 at First Congregational Christian Church which is at 638 High Street. The Omega service will be from 6 to 7 in the church sanctuary. Celebration of Life service will be Saturday, June 12th. will be held at 11 a.m. at Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church. That address is 1550 East Washington Street, Montgomery, Alabama, 36107. Our scripture for the week, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Proverbs, the third chapter, verses 5 through 6, NLT. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come this morning wanting to say thank you for loving us. Thank you, Lord Savior Jesus Christ, for saving us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding and directing us. Lord, we just want to say thank you for being God and being God 
all by yourself. Lord, you didn't need any assistance from us this morning when you tapped us on our shoulders and you said, get up. And so, Lord, we say thank you for that. We thank you that our eyes were open, that our ears were able to hear, that our limbs had movement, that our heart was yet beating. Lord, it was all because of you and your grace and your mercy. So, Lord, we say thank you. Father God, we come with hearts full of gratitude for this first Sunday morning where we get to celebrate what you did for each one of us. And we thank you for this opportunity, Lord God. We thank you that so many who don't know you, we are able to be a witness for them, Lord God. Lord, we ask that you would give us the zeal to go out and to boldly share your word, Lord God, to share the good news that there is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul, that there is a Savior who sits high but looks low and that he advocates for us day and night. Lord God, there's so much going on in our society, in our city, in our state, in this nation, in this world. Lord God, we need a healing. Lord God, there's so much violence, so much unrest, so much hunger, so much thirsting. But Lord God, we didn't come to tell you how big those problems are. We came standing flat foot and declaring that you are bigger and greater than anything that, we, that can come up against us. And so, Lord God, we come this morning boldly proclaiming that you are God of everything, that it is all in your control. Lord God, we know that you sit high, but you look low and you care about the affairs of these, your children. We are going to do as the Sunday school lesson told us, we are not going to worry. We're not going to worry because your word says, don't worry. We're going to trust, Lord God, and know that you are more than capable to do exceedingly and abundantly above anything that we could think to ask. Lord, we're coming with hearts that trust you. Lord God, we're laying at your feet the cares and concerns of this world. Lord, we're laying at your feet the cares and the concerns of our hearts this morning. Lord God, touch our young people. Send them guidance, Lord. Father God, touch our middle-aged people. Send them wisdom this morning. Lord, touch our senior members. Give them peace this morning. Lord God, we pray for those who are in bereavement. For their hearts are broken right now, but your word says that you came to bind the broken heart. So, Lord God, touch them right now. Let them feel the comfort of your touch. Let them know, Lord God, that you are there, that they are not alone, that your heart is touched with their grief. Lord God, we pray for those who are in hospitals right now, that are on beds of affliction right now, Lord God. Father God, we ask that your healing garment would hang just a little bit low right there where they are. Lord, and let them just touch the, the tassel, the hem of that garment. And Lord, we know that we are assured from your word that they will be made whole because you are a healing God. Lord God, we pray that you would come into this worship experience, that you would have your way. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Lord God, we ask that you would touch your manservant right now. Lord, touch him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Endow him with your wisdom. Anoint his tongue right now, Lord God, that he is able to speak those words that you have placed in his heart. Lord God, give him courage, give him wisdom, give him understanding, Lord God. Lord, thank you for his heart of compassion for these, your people. Lord God, we pray for his helpmate. 
Reverend Sheila, we ask that you would touch her right now, Lord God. We thank you for the nurturing spirit that you have placed on her, Lord God. We pray that you would bless her as she goes out and as she comes in, Lord God. Father God, we pray for the new doctor that you placed in the house. We ask that you would bless her, Lord God, as she prepares to go into this new journey that you have given her. Lord, help her to not be afraid. Help her to know that you have already gone for it and you've already prepared the ground and made it fertile for her. Lord God, we pray for all of our graduates who are embarking on new journeys right now, Lord God. We ask that you would grant them your wisdom, Lord God. Lord God, light their paths, Father God, with your word. Help them not to go too far to the left or to the right, Lord. But when they do, Lord God, gently nudge them back on the right path. Father God, we pray for their parents. We pray for their church family. We pray that they would continue to undergird them, Lord God, that they would continue to lift them in prayer, Father God. Lord, we pray for our school system. Lord, we need you in our education system. Lord, there is so much confusion, but you are not the author of confusion, so we know where that comes from. And so we send it back to the pit of hell where it came from. And we declare, Lord God, that your wisdom will reign supreme. Lord, we pray for those that are seated in seats of authority on all levels. We pray, Father God, that your wisdom, that even when they don't know that they're doing right, that you would nudge them to do right anyway, Lord God. That you would help them to rule your people justly and with mercy. Lord God, help us to continue to humbly walk before you. Father God, we give you praise, honor, and glory for being God and being God all by yourself. We thank you, Lord God, for Jesus. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. And we ask each one of these blessings in the name that is above every name, in the healing name, in the name where salvation is found, in the name where deliverance is found, in the name where the captives are set free. Lord God, it's in that name that we declare that you are God. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And thank you, Father. comes from Acts, the fifth chapter, verses 12 through 16. That's Acts, the fifth chapter, verses 12 through 16. And you find these words recorded. The apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people, and all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. No one else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shade might fall on them, on some of them, as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits, and all of them were healed. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall last forever.
that you live. We're so glad, Lord God, that even though they crucified you, even though they put the crown of thorns on your head and they nailed your hands on your feet, even though they pierced your side on that third day morning, on resurrection Sunday morning, you arose with all power in your hand. And because you live, we can face tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are. Now, Lord God, continue to bless, continue to move by the power of your spirit. Lord, we need you in every way. We need you, Lord God, to stand. We need you, Lord God, to do whatever you've called us to do. And now, Lord God, we need your Holy Ghost power to preach. So we thank you, Lord God, for manifesting yourself in this place. We thank you, Lord God, for filling me and all of us with your precious Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way. Come with all your quickening power and strengthen these cold hearts of ours. Lord God, we thank you in advance for how you will move in us in personal and in particular ways. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people agreed by saying, Amen. 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 The Lord is good, saints, and worthy to be praised. Worthy to be exalted. Worthy to be lifted up. Higher than situations. Higher than problems. Higher than circumstances. The Lord is indeed the answer. The word of God comes to us this morning from the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 5, I'll read just a few verses in your hearing, reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Acts chapter 5, beginning at verse 14. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord. ...them on beds and couches, that at least a shadow of Peter, the shadow of Peter, the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. I'm going to talk to you this morning about the power of contact. The power of contact. The power of connecting. The power of touch. The power of linking up with God in a particular way that we know is not us, but it's all him. And we give God praise. The power of contact. Praise the Lord. Well, here we have here. We see here that God has been moving by the power of his spirit. God has been blessing. God has been healing. God has been delivering. God has been doing his thing. God has been moving. And we see in Acts chapter 1. Verse 8, oh, he said, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Then you'll be witness unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. The Holy Spirit came to bring us power. He came to bring us together. We thank God for the unity of the Spirit. And because they were all in one accord and in one place, and because they were unified, and because they were together, they weren't separated, because they had the same mind, the same thoughts, the same prayer, the same belief, the same expectation. We see in Acts chapter 2 that the Holy Spirit came. They were all in one accord and in one place, and they had a suddenly experience. The Holy Ghost came in and divided upon them like tongues of fire. They were fired up by the power of the Holy Ghost. And in Acts chapter 3, we see here that Peter and John went into the temple at the time of prayer, and they ran upon a brother that had been lame not for a few years, but from his mother's womb. He was born that way, had never walked before, had never ran before, had never jumped before. But in the name of Jesus, because Peter said, I don't have any money. I don't have any silver and gold. Oh, but I do have something. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And immediately the man's feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, he entered into the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. In other words, he was not ashamed of his praise. He was not ashamed of what the Lord had done. He was not ashamed and he was blessed. And he let everyone know, I was lame, but now I'm walking. I was lame, but now I'm moving. I was lame, but now I'm jumping and leaping and giving God praise. Oh, what would happen in God's house? 
if we decided to get out of ourselves and we come into the house of God walking and leaping and giving God praise. Not ashamed of the gospel that we're preaching. Not ashamed of what God has done for us. Not ashamed of the fact of where God has brought us from. Not ashamed of the fact that we could not save ourselves, but we indeed need a Savior, and his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, in Acts chapter 5, the first part of that, it deals with the power of agreement, even if you agree on the wrong thing. Ananias and Sapphira had agreed together to do some things that were not like God. They had agreed together to receive some praise, to receive some honor, because right before that, Barnabas sold some property and gave the proceeds to the, um, the disciples and laid them at their feet, and they distributed to everyone that had need. They had all things come. Y'all get in mind. Now, this brother took some property and sold it and laid the proceeds at the apostles. In other words, y'all do what needs to be done. Those who, who don't have anything, bless them. Those who need something, bless them. I'm selling this property. I'm giving y'all the money. I'm trusting God that you will do the right thing with it. And because of that, he received some praise, some honor, and a little bit of glory. So Ananias and Sapphira said, I like that praise and glory and honor that that brother got. So, baby, this is what we're going to do. We're going to sell some property. We're not going to give all the money to the church. The church folks don't need all that money. We're not giving all the money to the church, but we're going to give a portion of it and keep some for ourselves. And if they ask us about it, oh, we gave it all to the church. Oh, we gave it all to the Lord. So Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart? You have not lied to men, you have not lied to women, but you have lied to the Holy Ghost. And immediately he dropped dead on the spot. Don't you know that'll dry up some praise? Don't you know that'll dry up some lying? Don't you know that'll dry up some gossiping? Don't you know that'll dry up some sin? When somebody will drop dead in the house of God, God is doing something. God is saying something. God has something on his mind. God said, I'm going to stop that mess before it spreads in my new thing called the church. Oh, Hallelujah. So about three hours later, Sister Sapphira came in. And Peter said, my sister, have you and your husband sold the land for such and such? She said, yeah, Pete, for such and such. He said, the same feet that carried your husband out, getting ready to carry, the same young man who carried your husband out, getting ready to carry you out, and she fell down and gave up the ghost. And the Bible says there was great fear in the house. Now I had to say all that to get to where we are right here, right now. And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among them. Hallelujah. And they were all in one accord in Solomon's porch, or in Solomon's colonnade. It was a place of, it was a place of arguing. It was a place of teaching. It was a place of, uh, of just sharing with the close friends. In other words, it was a place where people got together and talked about the things of God. It was a place that people got together and really sometimes they argued points about the things of God. They got to, but in this case, they were all in one accord on Solomon's porch. Hallelujah. And God was doing a powerful and a mighty work. And believers were increasingly added to the church because they were all in one accord. Look at this. They believed in Jesus, the son of the living God. They believed in the power of the Holy Ghost because they saw him moving, touching, and healing, and delivering. And great signs and wonders were happening all around them. I wonder myself. Why we don't see any signs and wonders like we need to see signs. I wonder myself why we don't see God moving the way he moved back then. But God is moving, but we don't trust. God wants to move, touch, heal, and deliver like he did. Then he wants to do the same thing right now. Because then Jesus said, greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father that's in heaven. In other words, Jesus is expecting us, the body of Christ, to get this thing done. Hallelujah. Here we are. So God was moving so powerfully. Look at this. They brought the sick out into the streets. Not so Peter could touch them. Not so any of, any of the other disciples could touch them. But they brought the sick out into the streets on beds and couches. Y'all get that picture in your mind. On beds and couches. Can y'all imagine carrying folk out into the streets? And Peter wasn't even close. They said, but just so he can just walk by, maybe his shadow will pass over me. 
Now, there was nothing magical about the shadow, but they just believed if I could just, they just believed. That was the whole point. They believed if I got close enough to the Holy Ghost. They believed that even the shadow of Peter, not the person of Peter, but the shadow of Peter, not the touch of Peter, but the shadow of Peter, not the sweat of Peter, but the sh if his shadow just passed by, I will be made whole. In other words, they were talking about the power of contact. The power of contact. The shadow was intangible. The shadow wasn't something they could touch. But they said, if I could just get in the shadow, I will be made whole and well for whatever was going on with me. If I could just get in the shadow. Somebody said, get in the shadow. But we're talking about a point of contact. A point of contact. The power of contact. Now, I'm going to break it down in a minute. But we're talking about the power of contact. Y'all said the power of contact. Same thing with the woman and her issues. She said, this is in Luke chapter 8, she said, if I can get close to Jesus, I've got an issue of blood, 12 years, and my one issue has compounded into other issues. I'm, I'm broke because I spent all of my money with physicians. I'm sick. I've been bleeding for 12 years. But if I can just get through the crowds, if I can just press on, and the Bible says in Luke chapter 8, she came up from behind. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. This sister was not supposed to be there. She was bleeding and she was ceremonially unclean. She was not supposed to be around anybody but outside of the camp. But she heard about Jesus. She heard about the power of God. She heard about the Son of God. And she knew Old Testament. She knew that they believed there was healing virtue in the tassels of the garment. So if I can just get close, he ain't got to say nothing to me. He didn't have to lay hands on me. But if I can just touch the hem of his garment, if I can touch those tassels, I shall be made whole. Hallelujah. So she pressed through the crowd. Not supposed to be there. She pressed through the crowd. Not even supposed to be in the number. She pressed through the crowd and touched Jesus. And look at Jesus. Who touched me? And they said, Master, everybody's touching you. Everybody's thronging you. Everybody's crowding you. He said, oh, but somebody made contact. Somebody made contact through their faith. Somebody touched me with faith. Everybody's grabbing on me. Oh, but somebody touched me. And they touched me with faith. And I felt virtue go out of me. I felt the power of God go out of me because somebody made contact. Hallelujah. And she, fearing and trembling, knew what had been done in her body, all because she had contact with Jesus. And Jesus said, daughter, don't worry about it. Everything is good. Hallelujah. Somebody, somebody say the power of contact. Hallelujah. Now let's look at Acts chapter 19. I know we hadn't gone there in a while, but Acts chapter 19. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 19, beginning of verse 11, that God worked unusual miracles by the hand of Paul. Unusual miracles by the hands of Unusual miracles by the hand of Paul. Now look at this. The Bible says here that even his handkerchiefs and aprons, his handkerchiefs and his aprons, Oh, this is a word for some preacher today. Paul was working. He had a handkerchief and he had on an apron. That's nothing worse than a lazy preacher. That gets on my nerve. Paul was working. I'm not saying you got to have a secular job, but I am saying you don't need to be a lazy preacher. I am saying you need to do what God has called you to do. I am saying you need to do what's necessary to get the job done. So he was working. And he had handkerchiefs. He had on aprons. And they said, now look at this, 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 contact, look at this. They said, Paul, you don't have to come. Paul, I know you're busy. Paul, I know you're working. But just in case you can't come, won't you send that handkerchief? Won't you send that? Because there's power in the contact. There's nothing magical about the handkerchief, but it's about the power of God. And he said, just in case you can't come, Paul, take off that apron. Send them that apron. Yes. And in the name of Jesus, they'll be healed and delivered and set free. Not because of me, but because of the cloth. Because of the contact. Because of what God is doing. Somebody say the power. The power of contact. Now they were not just healed, but delivered and set free because they made contact with God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
You see, look at this. See, the devil has tried to limit our contact. The devil, y'all hear me, has tried to limit our contact. Come on now. Everybody in here except me has got on a mask. He's trying to limit our contact. All right. For All right. a year and a half, we couldn't touch and shake hands and hug like we wanted to. The devil is trying to limit our on, contact. Yeah. The devil don't want us to touch. The devil don't want us to love on each other. He doesn't want us to agree in prayer. He doesn't want us to do what needs to be done. He's trying to limit our contact. Hallelujah. He don't want us to visit. He don't want us to touch. He doesn't want us to interact. He doesn't want us to do anything, but the devil is a liar. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. We're going to touch. Now look at this. We've been taught how to touch without physically touching. Because we couldn't touch. Oh, we've learned how to touch each other in prayer. We've learned how to get together, even though we couldn't get together. We learned how to get together in prayer. We need to learn how to get together in our belief. We learn how to get together in our hearts. Even though we weren't in the same place or in the same space, we were together. And God has taught us how to stay in contact. Contact with him. So just in case, just in case y'all hear me well. You now I love the touch. You now I love for the Holy Ghost to flow through a touch. But just in case I can't touch. Just in case you can't touch. Just in case you can't get close. Just in case you can't get near. There is power in contact. So if you stay in contact with the Lord, if you stay in contact with Jesus, if you stay in contact with the power of the Holy Ghost, you'll get a touch from God. Hallelujah. Well, this is first Sunday. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Y'all know most of us, we don't have any real wine. Most of us brought the wine from a store. Most of us did not bake that bread. We got the bread from a store. But y'all, it is a point of contact. Yeah. Hallelujah. We all know that it's wine and bread. Oh, but when we believe in Jesus, yeah. when we come to that altar, yeah. that yeah. wine and the bread is a point of contact. Yeah. And we're contacting Jesus. We're sharing in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. We're making contact with God through the blood of his son, Jesus. Hallelujah. So every time we come together, especially on the first Sunday, Especially when you break the bread and you drink the wine, you remember that we have contact with God. And there's power in contact. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord is good. Hallelujah. Worthy to be praised. So just in case you can't get to the altar, you need to learn how to contact with God. Just in case you can't come into a building, learn how to contact, make contact with God. Just in case you can't get close to one another, learn there's power. There's power. Yes, There's power. Yes, Holy Ghost power. There's power. Unseen power. There's power. Tangible power. There's power. There's authority. There's exousia. There's dunamis. There's power. There's power. There's power in contact. Hallelujah. Contact in my day, y'all. Contact in my day. That's all I came to tell you. There's power and contact. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That you can't make it without him. Tell them that you tried to do some things, but it didn't work because you had no real contact. You had no real power. You were just like an appliance that wasn't even plugged up. Matter of fact, these days we got Bluetooth. You didn't even have, you had no connection with God. But through Jesus, you can make contact right now. If there's anyone, if you are cut off from God, if you feel like there's no hope, I want to invite you to make contact this morning. It's very simple. All you have to do is believe that Jesus is the son of the living God. That he died on the cross, raised from the dead for all of our sin, all of our habits, all of our stuff. And if you believe that Jesus is the son of the living God, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So I'm praying with somebody right here right now. 
And if this is you, pray this prayer with me. Lord God, I come before your presence. In the name of Jesus, I confess my sins. I come believing that you are the son of the living God. I come believing in the power of the Holy Ghost. I come knowing I can be made right, not through my own efforts, but through Jesus. And I come confessing with my mouth the Lordship of Jesus and believing in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. And according to the word of God in Romans 10, right here, right now, I'm saved. And Lord God, right here, right now, I've made contact with you. Holy Spirit, fill us with your strength, with your wisdom, with your power to give us everything that we need, to give us the strength that we need, to give us the insight that we need. Give us what we need, Lord God, to represent you well so that others are saved, so that others are disciples, so that others are set free, so that others believe in the power of making contact with you. Bless us this day, Lord God. Bless us this day. In Jesus name we pray amen amen the power of contact and right now we're preparing for holy communion we are contacting contacting the lord through these elements that have been blessed so now the power so if you're at home want to share with us if you're at home want to get your some juice or water or cracker see as long as you bless it in jesus name it's all good you're making contact Join us for Holy Communion. Amen. The general confession, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord.
by his death and washed through his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy to give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we must humbly beseech you, and grant that we, receiving these, your creatures, of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you should drink it in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you praise for your body. You thought it not robbery to come through 42 generations, Lord God, to become flesh and to dwell among us. I thank you for your body. I thank you, Lord God, for just being led of the Spirit and doing all that you did with your body. And Lord God, you also gave up your body to be beaten. Lord God, to be whipped. For them to nail your hands and your feet. I give you praise. So I thank you, Lord God. On this day, I celebrate this bread, which represents your body, what you did for me on Calvary over 2,000 years ago. And I partake, and I'm thankful. And the blood, the blood that's more precious than goats and pigeons and bulls of the Old Testament, the blood that washes away all of our sin, the blood that poured forth on Calvary as well. I thank you, Lord God. Your blood washes away all my sin, and I'm thankful. Sheila, before you is the bread, which is the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take now and eat. And the wine, which is the very blood of Christ, take now and drink. Rise, my sister. You have renewed your spiritual covenant with God. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord, our heavenly Father, we, your humble servants, desire your fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving most humbly beseeching you to grant that by the merits and death of your son jesus christ and through faith in his blood we and your whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion 
And here we offer and present unto you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto you. Humbly beseeching you that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto you any sacrifice, yet we beseech you to accept this abounding duty and service, not wearing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto you, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. We praise you. We bless you. We worship you. We glorify you. We give thanks to you for your great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father that takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. You who takes away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You who sits at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For you alone are holy. You alone are the Lord. You alone, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, are the Most High in the glory of God the Father. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Rise. Yes. And giving God praise. Hallelujah. Yes. And let us pray. Father God, we thank you for who you are. Thank you for blessing us and for keeping us. Now, Lord God, watch over us as we depart this place, but never from your holy presence. Keep us safe from hurt, harm, or danger until we gather together again. All God's people agreed by saying, Amen. Amen. Amen.